Hi guys, today I'm here with my April and May reading wrap up and highlights because you may have noticed that I haven't been around these parts for a while. I have taken it easy on the YouTube front um, because I've had my exams and so revision and all that kind of stuff and I've taken a bit of a break to focus on that. But now I am back, I am working full time on my blog, my YouTube channel and my writing and I'm really excited to discuss that further over the next few months to reveal all my exciting plans because there are some very secret exciting plans in the works and to share everything that I'm going to be doing but I want to spend some time now catching you up on all the books that I've read and these really are the highlights. I read a lot of YA in April which I know that not a lot of you are interested in and it was also for the YA book prize because I was the judge so I don't want to talk about all of the books that I read for that. Instead I'm going to talk about the winner which I'm really pleased with and I'm also going to talk about lots of the classics that I've read. My reading was split in two really so I've got 10 books to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk about the classics first and then some of the non-YA and then finally the YA books um, and I really hope you enjoy this wrap up. Even those of you who don't enjoy YA or even those of you who don't enjoy classics I feel like there's some really good middle ground here so there is something for everyone and I really enjoyed everything that I read. So the first book that I read in April which seems a very long time ago now was The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins and I filmed a video for the Book Break channel all about this. I did a reading vlog where I split the book into three parts and filmed my reactions to each part so you can go and watch that. I'll link to that. I was paid to make that video but I haven't been paid to mention it at this. I just thought that you would probably like to watch it and it fully explains all my thoughts on the book but I did really love this. I wasn't expecting to like it. I don't know why it's just more of a mystery which I don't always enjoy but I did find myself really enjoying this and as time passes I'm finding a greater appreciation for it as well which I really love when that happens. The Woman in White is a really difficult book to summarise because lots goes on in it and there's lots of different plot strands but I would basically describe it as about a man called Walter Hartwright who goes to work as an art tutor and he teaches two women to paint and draw and they are called Laura Fairley and her half-sister Mariam Halcombe and Laura is a very pretty lady and she looks remarkably like a woman in white that Walter saw escaping from an asylum back in London and this starts this story of both women and about marriage and the intrigues of the law and what can go wrong in marriage. It's a sensation novel which means that it combines gothic tropes with melodrama and so much goes on in it that I feel like you've got to read it for yourself to find out exactly what it's about. It was recently made into a BBC miniseries and I did watch the first episode but I didn't love it so I don't know if I'll be watching the rest of it but it is a good one to to read and watch to see which one you like best and I would really recommend it. I was, like I said, not too sure if I would enjoy it but I'm definitely going to read more Wilkie Collins now and I absolutely loved The Woman in White. Jumping forward to May and by far my favourite book that I read over both months was Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. If you watched my previous reading wrap up then you'll know that I read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and that was my first book of hers and I fell in love with it completely and I had exactly the same reaction to Jamaica Inn. Like Rebecca it has many gothic tropes and is set on Bodmin Moor in Cornwall and I love the way that Daphne du Maurier writes about Cornwall and it was really interesting to see how her depiction of Cornwall changes in both novels. So as Rebecca is set in the summer and the rhododendrons are out and that means that it almost feels too hot in Jamaica Inn it's set in the winter and you have the bleak moor and it's a lot 
darker because of it but at the same time Rebecca feels a lot more heated so I loved seeing that and I'm interested to see how Daphne du Maurier does the same things in her other novels. It's about a young woman called Mary Yellen whose mother dies which means that she is orphaned so she goes to live with her aunt and her new husband and it's about the smuggling business and the really awful things that happened and I loved Mary. There was also a romance and a mystery and there was just so much to like about this book and I loved Mary as a character. I loved the protagonist of Rebecca but there was something about Mary. She had this inner spark that I loved and it did put me in a reading slump for the rest of the month because nothing could beat it. I tried to pick up about 10 books after that but nothing was as good as Jamaica Inn. So I've got to be careful now when I read Daphne du Maurier because she's just superior to any other author I could read and I love her books and I just want to read more and more but I'm having to restrain myself because otherwise I'm sure I'll read them all in one go and there won't be any left. If you haven't read any Daphne du Maurier before then I think this would be a great place to start but equally Rebecca is also a good place to start so I do think you could read either of these and fall in love with her writing. Next up is a small book in Penguin's new Penguin Modern series and I'm trying to read my way through all of them and I've read one so far and it set the bar very high and it was Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr. There's not a lot I can say about this book because I do think that it is a book that everybody should read and whether it's this book or some other writing of his I just think it it blew me away I was astounded by the writing style and this just I'm just speechless thinking about it I could talk about this and that about it, how it is good because of this reason and you should read it because of this. But honestly, my words don't matter because the most important thing is the message that Martin Luther King Jr. is talking about and the way in which he does it is so articulate that it's impossible to disagree with him and I loved this. So I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to say anything just for the sake of saying it. I would really love you to go out and read this book. Next up I read a book published by Persephone Books that I featured in my spring at TBR and it was Someone at a Distance by Dorothy Whipple. This was her last published novel and I recently got a copy of her first published novel so I'm not really reading them in the correct order but it was a great introduction to her writing. I loved her writing style. It's set just after the Second World War and I'm really enjoying books written during or after the Second World War at the moment and this did not disappoint me at all. Someone at a Distance is about the North family and a young French woman called Louise who goes to live with them and snakes her way in and consumes them and destroys their family life and and Avery the husband becomes infatuated with her and she's very cold and calculated and I loved Dorothy Whipple's characterization how each character felt so individual and the way that Louise treated her parents was appalling she was so horrible to them and they would have given her the world and then the way that once she gets what she wants she just seems to trod on everyone under her and how lovely Ellen the wife of Avery is and how she just didn't deserve to be treated the way that she was treated either and then the kids involved in that and it's a brilliant depiction of what happens when family life dissolves and what happens when two people have an affair and other people are left behind. I didn't imagine Dorothy Whipple's writing style to be so engaging but because of her characterization and because of this very easy flowing style to her writing I got captured from the first page and it really set the bar high for my reading for the rest of the month. Because I read and enjoyed this so much I'm now really looking forward to reading more from Dorothy Whipple. I think I'm going to read Young Anne next and then who knows where I will go after that but I'm very excited to try and read all of her books. So those were all the classics that I read in April and May. My classics reading has gone a bit downhill. I've really Really got out of practice of reading classics so I'm looking forward to spending more time on them in the next few months 
but I read some other brilliant books and I'm going to talk about an adult novel that's now become one of my favourite books and also a children's book that I really loved. And the first book is The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaffer and Annie Barrows. And I wanted to read this because I bought a copy a few months ago and the film is coming out and I think it is out. I didn't get to see it in cinemas but I'm definitely going to watch it when it comes out on DVD because I'm very outdated like that and I fell in love with it. Honestly it's my ideal book. If you could write a list of everything I love most this would be the book. It is told in letter form and talks about the island of Guernsey after the Second World War which was occupied by the Nazis and it's about the inhabitants of the island starting a book club as a ruse because food was scarce and they one day had a pig that they shared and they nearly got caught out so they started a book club out of this to use it as a way to hide their comings and goings but actually the book club became so much more than that and the central character in the book is Juliet who is a writer who goes to Guernsey to find out more about the people living there and what their lives were like during the war. It was very emotional in places and there were so many characters that I fell in love with and I really loved the references to books too. There was a point in the book where it references Shirley by Charlotte Bronte which is of course my favourite book of all time and I've never seen anyone else talk about it in any book so to see that just made my heart soar and it's one of those books again that I really do think that you have to read for yourself to find out how good it is. I loved the letters and I know that some people maybe don't love reading books in letter form but I thought it worked really well and I just wish there was more to it. I wish it was so much longer and I wish that I could spend even more time with the characters but I am looking forward to watching the film after reading this because I really hope it is just as good. And then the children's book that I read which has now become a new favourite series of mine is Nevermore The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend and I don't say it lightly but I think that this could give Harry Potter a run for its money and you know how big Harry Potter is? I think that this has got just as much potential. I think it would make a brilliant film. I think the rights have been snapped up and it's such a visual book. It's one of those books that I read and I thought I needed this when I was younger but it's also the kind of book that as an 18 year old I really loved and even if you're 80 I think you'd love this. It is a book for everyone. It's about a girl called Morrigan who is destined to die on her birthday because she is cursed but as the clock strikes on her birthday a man called Jupiter North comes along and says he's going to take her away to the land of Nevermore where he is going to enter into these trials and she will get to then live there and I loved Morrigan as a character, I loved how outrageous Jupiter was and I thought there were so many points in the book where I just couldn't put it down because it was so adventurous and so exciting and like I said really visual, the world is incredible and I could see everything and imagine everything happening, I could imagine my own place in that world which I love and it is a fantasy book but at the same time there's so much heart and humanity in it that I felt like I was reading about my best friends and I love that about it. So even if you are not a child, I think that you should read Nevermore because it has something about it that everybody will love. As you've probably guessed if you've been watching my channel for a while, I don't really read lots of hardcore fantasy and by hardcore fantasy I mean books that are fantasy books that lots of fantasy fans love because they're just not usually my type of books. But a friend of mine, L.D. Lipinski on Twitter has recently been raving about Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman and I decided that I should probably read it. I don't know why but one day I decided to order it and I read it on the same day that it arrived because I was intrigued from the first page and I just loved it. It was hilarious and at the same time just spectacular. It's about an angel from heaven and somebody from hell and their quest to, well, it's really tricky to explain because everybody else is trying to bring about the war between heaven and hell 
but their roles are a little bit different because they don't really stick to the rules and I loved them. This is also being adapted into, I think, a TV series and it's going to be starring David Tennant and Michael Sheen and I've seen stills and set pictures from it and it looks incredible so I'm looking forward to watching that. I wasn't expecting this to be so funny but it was and it's a really tricky book to try and explain what it's about. So it's another one that you've just got to read for yourself because because even if you're not a hardcore fantasy fan like me, then I think that there's going to be something about it that really makes you love it. I would definitely read more from Neil Gaiman or Terry Pratchett now that I've read this, but I don't really know where to start. I know lots of you recommended some more Neil Gaiman books to me on Instagram, but where should I start with Terry Pratchett? If you've read any of his books, then I'd really love to know in the comments what you think I should read next. On to the YA now, and I read some really good YA books. I haven't been reading much YA this year but that's changing now and I'm trying to balance my reading more and I was a judge of the YA book prize and the book that won it was After the Fire by Will Hill and this was a book that I was championing right from the beginning. When I got the shortlist through I didn't think that I was going to love this as much as I did and it really was one of the underdogs and it came out fighting and I loved that about it. There were lots of authors that I'd already read and loved on the shortlist so it was really nice to find a new author that I'm going to be reading everything from now and honestly this is a brilliant showcase of exactly what UKYA should be. This is about a teenage girl called Moonbeam who has grown up in a cult and the book is set before a tragic event and then after and so you see the different sides of Moonbeam and it's about mental health and how we can overcome tragedy and unraveling the thoughts in your mind and I love the fascinating insight into the human condition and how people can do really evil things and also how people can follow that and I loved Mimi as a character I loved seeing her journey and it is a faultless book it really is again if you don't read a lot of YA I think that you will really enjoy this and I think that if you enjoy picking apart why people do the things that they do then you'll also really enjoy this this is definitely one that I think everybody is going to be talking about now that it has won the prize and I'm so glad that it did win. Then we have a book by another very successful YA author and it is Clean by Juno Dawson. It's really difficult to show just how gorgeous this cover is. It is this gorgeous foil and you can see everything is shining in the background. I love it. This is about a girl called Lexi who becomes addicted to heroin and it's a very harrowing book but also funny in places and hopeful and offers a really interesting insight into what it's like to be addicted to drugs but not just drugs it is about a rehabilitation center so there's lots of other addictions discussed as well and I think the danger with books about addiction is that it will become glorified and it will be seen as this great thing to do but that doesn't happen in clean and it was a very realistic and open discussion on addiction and the effects of it and the effects on the people around and not just that one person who is addicted. Lexi is a character who is so perfectly crafted. She was fantastic. She is not the best person. I don't think I would be friends with her but that is what makes her brilliant because I love reading about characters who are very different to me, who live very different lives, but at the same time you can perfectly picture what they are going to do and how they're going to act. I love Juno Dawson's books and I think that this is my favourite since I read Cruel Summer. And finally, off the back of Royal Wedding Fever, I read Royals by Rachel Hawkins and I had pre-ordered this because I'd seen it on Twitter a few months ago and I thought, this is what I need in my life. And it's one of those books that you can read and just forget who you are for a bit and go into the world and I loved it. It is about a girl whose sister is set to marry the Prince of Scotland. It is an imaginary royal family and it's got a kind of Pride and Prejudice style romance 
romance, which was really sweet to read about. I loved the main character, Daisy, and I loved her interactions with her sister and how that wasn't a perfect, really loving relationship. But at the same time, they were siblings and that is what tied them together. I also recently found out that there is going to be a prequel to this starring a relationship between two girls. And I'm so excited about that because I love the hints to that relationship during Royals. So I really want to read more set in this world and I'd love to catch up with the characters again. It was one of those books that was just great to read in a day and I did read it in a morning because I got completely swept away in it. So if you were interested in the Royal Wedding, then I think that you should read Royals. So those were the best books that I read during April and May. I'd love to know what your favourite books that you read in both months were in the comments below. Are there any books that you'd recommend to me based on the ones that I've read and enjoyed? So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!